Happy Rosh Kodesh, everyone. Tonight starts Adar, the 12th month. So get ready, all you story of Esther and one night with the king and for such a time as this, fans. We are entering the month of Adar, the 12th month of the redeemed biblical year, and it's the sixth month of the civil year. The month Adar is associated with the tribe of Naphtali, and Naphtali's name means my wrestling. Naphtali's position around the tabernacle was to the north. And as you know, this month hosts the joyous festival of Purim, meaning lots, as in a lottery. It's a reminder that Haman, an enemy of the Jews, casts lots to determine the date for the final solution in which Haman would have all the Jews everywhere put to death. Sounds like a mini Passover story to me. Instead of Pharaoh, it's Haman. And just like Passover, which is on the 14th and 15th of Nisan, the first month of the redeemed year, which is next month, Purim takes place on the 14th and 15th of Adar, this month, celebrating our victory over the evil decree of Haman. So yeah, this month is like a mini Passover, a preparation getting us ready for our great redemption. We'll read more about the story of Esther later on this month. With the story of Esther in mind, Adar was actually a time of great trouble, which is actually fitting that the tribe of Naphtali is associated with this month. Remember, Naphtali means my wrestling. So as you can see, Adar brings both struggles and wrestling. It's almost like this month is the birthing pains of something greater to come. <laughs> Nissan, anyone? We interrupt this broadcast in order to bring you this SAR TV breaking news bulletin. This just in, though the month of Adar may bring some added tribulation and distress, we must remember the words of Yahshua as found in John chapter 16, verse 33. These things I have spoken unto you, that in me, ye may have peace. In the world you shall have tribulation, but be of good cheer, for I have overcome the world. Another meaning for the word Adar is strength and good fortune. In other words, while you may go through the struggle, remember, Yah is your strength and song, and He has become your Yeshua, your salvation. We now return you to your regularly scheduled program. Now, I'm not going to drag this out. I'm going to be sort of brief. I just want to make an observation. We all know from experience that as we approach the Feast of Passover, like clockwork, for some of us, trouble precedes our festival of freedom. Now, we can look at these coming days in a negative way, or we can view it through our spirit man and see it in a positive way, as growing pains or birthing pains. Trouble in the spiritual equals growth and progress. It's a time of perfecting, strengthening, causing you to draw nearer to God in faith. Scripture says our light afflictions are working for us. It's a positive, it's a benefit that brings a far greater weight of glory. Now again, this month is associated with the tribe of Naphtali, meaning my wrestling. It's personal, folks, bringing enhancement and strength to each one of our personal walks with the Lord. Struggle brings growth. When we go to the gym, we are struggling for our good. No pain, no gain. Naphtali's name comes from Genesis chapter 30, verses 7 and 8. And Bilhah, Rachel's maid, conceived again, and bare Jacob a second son. And Rachel said, With great wrestling have I wrestled with my sister, and I have prevailed. And she called his name Nephtali, meaning my wrestling. So though this month is associated with wrestling and struggle, we will prevail at the end just like Israel did when he struggled with the angel of the Lord 
and he prevailed. Weeping endures for a night, but joy comes in the morning. Remember, Jacob did not get his name changed until after the struggle. Now here's where it gets interesting. Bilhah, Rachel's handmaid, she's the one who actually gave birth to Nephtali. Now get this. Bilhah's name means to trouble. How about that? So we can actually see there's double trouble, double struggles, double wrestling during this month of Adar as we approach the festival of our freedom. Nisan is our new year, our new beginning, which begins after the month of Adar, after the struggle after the wrestling, new beginnings, our freedom. So if you look at our trouble, you look at this month in the positive, you can see Adar as the birthing month for Nisan. Considering Adar is the 12th month. And what is it going to do? It's going to give birth to new beginnings, our new year, the month of Nisan, ushering in our freedom. Now, I know it's commonplace for most people, you know, tradition to look at this month as, oh boy, here comes trouble because we're coming up to Passover. But don't look at it in the negative. Look at it in the positive. Look at our struggles, our wrestling, our trouble as working for us a far better weight of glory. Look at it in joy, not in fear, because we are more than conquerors in Christ. And though we walk through the valley in the shadow of death, there is no need to fear because Yahuwah Sevaot, the Lord of hosts, walks with us. Therefore, the victory is yours. Somebody should start singing that song, Victory is Mine. Victory is Mine. I told Satan to get thee behind. Victory today, tomorrow, and forever is mine. Why, as they used to sing in the old days, because he lives, I can face tomorrow, the next day, and the next day, because my Redeemer lives. Now, I could go on, but I want you guys to allow the Holy Spirit to bring out hidden jewels of Adar and, and the parallels between Purim and Passover. For example, in both Purim and Passover, the nations attach themselves to Israel. Both of them have dates of 14 and 15. Also in Purim and Passover, there was a feast before the freedom. Now I'm going to stop right there. Let's prepare ourselves for the blessing, the blessing of the 12th month, the month of Adar. Happy Rosh Kodesh. Blessed Father and King, with your word you created the heavens and the hosts of them. A rule and a schedule did you give them that they not alter their assigned task. They are joyous and happy to perform the will of their creator, the one who does truth. To the moon he said that it should renew itself as a crown of splendor for those carried by him from the womb, those who are destined to renew themselves like it and to glorify their molder for the sake of his glorious kingdom. Blessed are you, Abba Yah, our King, Helper, Savior, and Shield, who renews us and the months. May it be thy will, Lord, our God, and God of our fathers, that you renew to us your grace and mercy. Please bless us with a life of health and peace, a life of goodness and blessing, a life of substance, a life in which we reverence your holy name and resist sin, a life in which there is no shame or humiliation, a life of wealth and honor, a life in which we love your Torah and delight to do your will. We ask you, Father, to fulfill the request of our hearts, and we seal this prayer of the new month in Yeshua's name. Amen. <laughs>